Happy Thursday, everybody. I pray all is well. My name is Michael Gibson, and I'm talking about why I go to church. And I am calling this, you can keep a secret, and thank God for his grace. Many times I say over and over again that we are the church, physically, myself and everybody else that may Good morning or good afternoon, Mr. Hunter. Everyone that may view this broadcast now or later, we are the church. We physically make up the church. Where we go to assemble ourselves is just that place where we fellowship, but we all need to have a personal relationship with God because God is just that awesome. And one of the reasons why I go to church, hey, cuz, one of the reasons I go to church and I'm realizing, good morning, Ms. Tall, is that if you, look, I was born an 80s, 90s baby. And if all this social media would have been around when I was a kid, and even in my young adult life, I probably wouldn't be able to speak in front of you right now. And when I read the word of God, I'm so graceful, grateful for his grace and his mercy that I'm not consumed. And that's why I keep going to church because God really can, good afternoon, God can really keep a secret. I've been looking at some things online and I see story after story after story about a pastor being exposed, a pastor being uncovered, about members being uncovered. I am so glad that God's love covers a multitude of sin because many times the greatest commandment that we should never break is the 11th one and that's thou shall not get caught and I'm telling you God did not allow me to get caught by people that was looking to stab me in the back God did not allow me to get caught by people that was trying to tear me down God did not allow me to get caught by people that wanted to kill me God did not allow me to get caught and lose my life I'm so glad that God loved me enough that when he allowed me to be exposed, he allowed me to be exposed to someone that loved me, that cared about me, and that didn't kick me off the curb. They loved me, they care about me, they didn't kick me off the curb. They didn't put me to the side. They just said, you can do better. You know better to do better. And I'm so grateful to God that he's given me the opportunity to change my life. Not everybody gets a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance. Not everybody gets those chances. And I'm so grateful to God that he loved me enough that he allowed me to have another chance to make it right because I've done a lot of wrong. When I read the book of Galatians, that book is written to the church, especially when you get to the sixth verse. And I read that and I look, God, I was, a, I, I think I've done everything in this book, everything in this chapter. I think I may have been involved in. The world didn't know, but you knew it, God. And you kept my secrets. You didn't pull back the sheet, so to speak. You, you, didn't, you didn't say, this is your bed, you gotta lie in it. God gave me the opportunity to say, this is your bed, I'm allow you to see it, and I'm gonna allow you to take some stuff out of your bed. Now, if you don't take this stuff out of your bed, I'm gonna open up the door to your room, and everybody's gonna be able to see what's in your bed. Be grateful, be grateful, you should say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Do a praise dance, whatever circle, that the world doesn't know all your secrets. God knows all your secrets, but he keeps on loving you because he died for you before you committed any of those faults. And I'm not trying to give glory uh, to anything but God. When I begin to read the word and, I, and I, I see how David, we all say that David was a man after God's own heart. David has some serious issues serious issues first Saul pursued him then once Saul died he had some children Absalom and some other things and Absalom and his one son they were battling each other the one son rapes the, the sister so the son kills him and then Absalom tries to take his throne and I'm thinking like God how could David be a man after your own heart and he has all this drama because God began to show me it's not the drama in your life that defines your relationship with me. 
It's your willingness to talk to me. It's your willingness to become transparent before me. Hey, hey, sweetheart, it's your willingness to see that I'm a flawed person. And I'm grateful to God today that he allows me to see that I'm still a flawed person. But he loves me enough to say, I'm not going to let the whole world see your flaws. I'm just going to allow you to see your flaws. And if you're humble enough, I'll help you fix your flaws. And I'm so grateful for that. I don't think I'll never stop going to church. I'll never stop studying this word. Hey, Thea, because God is just that good. Because when I look back and I, and I begin to reflect this week, with all these cameras, all these cameras, everywhere you go, with, with Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, if all of that would have been around 10 years ago, I might be in prison today. God knows what I did, but God was good enough and graceful enough to allow me the opportunity to make it right. And I'm not saying that people are not hurt by some of the things that we do, but God forgives you. The question is, will you forgive you? And that's one of the reasons why I keep studying. That's one of the reasons why I keep reading because God is reminding me all the time. I forgave you, but will you forgive you? A lot of people preach and teach on the things that they're in. And God said, I don't want you to talk about what you're in until you have been set free from them. I can be honest with you. I probably was the worst kind of Christian because I said one thing and did another thing. And God is showing me that if you want the power back in ministry, if you want the full manifestation of who I am to show up where you are, you're going to have to be able to walk in truth and transparency because when the covers come off, you want the world to know this is where I've been, but this is where I am now. I'm seeing that a lot of people are still where they were. And that's why I keep reading this word. That's why I keep praying. That's why I keep listening, listening to the teachings. That is why I keep listening to other people that are, are where I want to be because I don't have it all together. And I know I'm not the only one that doesn't have it all together. God is allowing us the opportunity while we still have breath in our body to make things right. And as long as God is going to allow me the opportunity to make things right, I'm going to honor him. Because to be honest, if it wasn't for his grace and his mercies, I wouldn't be here today. And like I said before, the 11th commandment, thou should not get caught. I know that's not biblical, but truth be told, if we got caught where we were in the things that we were doing, we might not even have our job. We might not even be allowed to watch people's kids. We might not even be able to go in the store some of the things we did. So I'm so grateful that I was not brought up in this era right now because these kids have it hard. So I just want to encourage everybody to love on our youth, love on the people that made mistakes because we've all made the same mistakes too. There just wasn't a camera to capture us. And God, God knows all of your secrets. God knows all of your flaws. But one of the things that God will do is he will allow you to come back home if you are sincere. We always talk about the prodigal son, but what about the prodigal father? What about the person that says, you know what? You can come back home. I know you asked for your money. I know you asked for all that stuff. I know you spent all your money, but you came out of my loins and I love you enough, I allow you to come back home. That's why I will, I will forever eternally be grateful to God because he has allowed me to come back home when I should not have been able to come back home. He has allowed me to raise my hands when by all means my hands were too dirty to be raised. And when I begin to read in, Dan, in, in Samuel and I read about the story of David, God loved David not because David was a perfect man. God loved David because David was willing enough to say before God, I'm sorry. David was willing enough to lift up his holy hands and say, God, I need you. 
and he would get on his knees. He would lie prostrate. He would rent his clothes and say, God, I need you. I think if this world, if we all get to the position where we say, God, I need you, and we don't think that we know it all, that we don't think that we have it all, that we don't think that we arrive, we will be in a better place. And I'm not talking about being in a building and listening to some pastor telling you that you need to get yourself together. I'm talking about you look in the mirror and recognize that you need to get yourself together. That's myself included. I'm talking to God is beginning to show me if you really want, if you really want the power back in the building, you have to be able to be clean yourself. You have to be able to examine yourself and make a change for yourself. Make a change for yourself, not from someone else, but for yourself. Do it for yourself while you still have breath in your body. So that's why I'm going to continue to read this word. That's why I'm going to continue to be faithful to God because God has been so faithful to me. And I am so grateful. I'm so humbled by the love that God keeps showing me day in and day out. Even when I don't deserve his love, he still shows me his love. Because in his word, he says, I don't have love, I am love. And he says that the greatest commandment of all these is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, and to love thy neighbor as their self. If you can't forgive yourself, you can really never love your, your neighbor. Because when you don't forgive yourself, you have a, a load of bitterness, there can be a load of heartache, there can be a load of mistrust, because when you don't forgive yourself, it is hard to love someone else. It is so hard to give to someone when you are broken. It is so hard to help someone when you're hurting. It is so hard to be happy. It is so hard to keep smiling. It is so hard to keep walking. It is so hard to keep going forward when you don't have any legs to stand yourself. Whatever we are going through, just know, God already knew you were going to do it. God has already provided a way to bring you through it. All he's asking for you to do is to admit that you need him. If we admit that we need God and that we need a savior and that we don't have all the answers, life will be so much better. Our life will be so much better. Our relationships will get so much better because what I'm beginning to see is that we, have, we wear so many facades trying to portray an image that is really not who we are. God knows who we are. God knows all your secrets. And I continue to go to church because as God reminds me, it's not about the wrong you've done. It's about the good I have for you to do. It's not about the wrong you've done. It's about the good I have yet for you to do. And if you honor and obey me, I can help you win the loss. The whole point of me coming on here week after week is to try to win the loss. My goal is just to let you know that you need to develop a relationship because that life is short and that life is fragile and everything happens at the speed of relationships. And if you don't have someone in your life that you can talk to, if you don't have someone in your life that actually can hold your hand when it's so unsteady, if you don't have someone in your life that you can give a hug to, if you don't have somebody in your life that you can cry on their shoulder, life really isn't worth living. It's really hard to live in this world alone. And I'm not talking about being married. I'm talking about having real, real true relationships. And one of the reasons that I go to church, because I realize that I'm in relationship with the father. He holds all my secrets. And because he can hold my secrets, that means he can hold my hand. That means he can lift up my head. Because he keeps saying, come. 
somebody needs to know that God still has an outstretched arm for you. That God still wants you to come back. That God has never given up on you. And that God still loves you. And God still has need of you. If you are breathing and if you are catching this live, or if you are catching this replay, know that God still has need of you. That God died a long time ago. He is not dying again. But he did leave his blood to cover up all of our sins. What we're in, what you have done, it doesn't matter if you become godly sorry. And just because you become godly sorry, and just because God forgives you, it doesn't mean that people are going to forgive you. It doesn't mean that people are going to move on because forgiveness doesn't erase the past. It enlarges the future. And when you recognize the grace and mercy that God has shown you, you will more likely be more empathetic to other people that have fallen. And this is again, not glorifying falling, but I now see how God, has kept his outstretched hand. God never left me, I left him. God never left me, I left him. And during some of the darkest hours of my life, God still stretched out his hand and basically said, you can come home. We have a father that doesn't wanna see anybody lost. I don't wanna see anybody lost. I just encourage you to find a place where your soul really can be fed. Find a place where you can have tangible relationships where actually somebody can physically hold your hand. I'm not talking about through the screen. I'm talking when someone actually can physically give you a hug. Because one of the first times God said it wasn't good, he said it wasn't good for man to be alone. Because we are designed to be in relationship with people. We are designed to fellowship with people. We are designed and our nature to commune with people. We need to get off of these screens and actually start interacting with real life people. You'll never know the power of a hug until you really needed one. You'll never know the power of a pat on the back until you really needed one. One of the most happiest things that I can have in my life is when my child will just come up to me and say, Dad, I love you, and he gives me a hug. He could call me FaceTime and give me a hug, but there's nothing like when I actually feel his presence. There will be no other people and other believers. I just wanna encourage you, find a place of worship. I know church may have done people wrong, but again, we are the church. The people are the church. We are all flawed human beings. And I'm not saying to stay in a position of abuse. I'm not encouraging you to stay with someone that really doesn't love you. But just know that we all have a, a place of brokenness. And sometimes because we didn't forgive ourselves, that's why we keep walking out in a broken life. I just want you to know that God keeps your secrets. And because he kept your secrets, and because he still has an outstretched hands, you should come back to him. You should start learning of him. You should start partaking in him. You should try to fall in love with him again. This is Michael Gibson, and that's why I go to church, because God kept my secrets, and I'm grateful for his grace and mercy that followed me, that continues to follow me, and that he continues to love me. And because he loves me, I'm just trying to love him back with the same passion, with the same energy that he pursues me, because he will never stop pursuing you, so you should never stop pursuing him. Again, I encourage you to find a place where your soul can be fed. Find a place where your soul can be fed. Because if you don't eat any spiritual food, you will be spiritually malnourished. And with everything that's coming at us in this world, it's going to be very hard. It's going to be very difficult to survive. And I need you to survive. Meech, I need you to survive. Joyce, I need you to survive. I need everybody to survive because to be honest, I don't have all the answers. And some of my answers are gonna be found in the friends and family that you have around. 
Some of your answers can be found in your friends and the families that you have around that really love you. So I'm grateful to everybody that clicked onto this video. If it encouraged you, share it out. But this is Michael Gibson, and that's why I go to church. Stay blessed.